Good day, students. I am Dr. Monica Khetarpal. I am Associate Professor of Physics in Government Dungar College, Bikaner. Today, I am going to deliver a lecture of MSc Final Physics. And the topic is AC Josephson effect. In my previous lecture, I have taught you DC Josephson effect. So before moving on to AC Josephson effect, I will give you a brief review of my previous lecture. For this purpose, if we have two metals which are separated by an insulator, and if this insulating layer is very thin, then there is a probability that an electron can cross from one metal to another. This process was tunneling. And if we replace this metal, two metals by superconductor, this process is termed as Josephson effect. Here I have shown two superconductors separated by insulator. Now, when there is no voltage source applied, then in output, as I have shown in my previous lecture, we get an output current, which is DC. Now, here I am applying a voltage source. In this case, we will get an output that is AC. So here I am taking a voltage V, which is applied across a junction. Now, since in a superconductor, we always consider a electron pair. That means a Cooper pair. So when tunneling takes place from one junction to another junction, an electron pair will experience a potential energy difference, QV, on passing through the junction. And so the charge, this is not equal to a single charge minus E, it is equal to Q equal to minus 2E. So we can consider that an electron on one side is that potential energy minus EV, then an electron on another side will have a potential energy plus EV. Now I'm writing the Schrodinger equation of motion for these pair. The general form of Schrodinger equation, we know iota h cross del psi by del t is equal to h psi. Here h is the energy and we can express our energy to be equal to h cross omega. Here I am writing h cross t. What is t? t is the transfer interaction. It represents the interaction of first junction with second and similarly that of second with first. Psi is the probability amplitude. First of all, I am writing my expression for first junction. For first junction, the expression will be iota h cross. In spite of psi, I have to write psi 1, capital H, h cross t. And since interaction of first takes place with the second, therefore, I have to use the probability amplitude of second junction, which has a value psi 2. Now, since the pair on one side is that potential energy EV minus EV. So we will have energy minus EV. And this is for first junction. So I'm writing my wave function to be psi 1. Similar expression is for second junction. The pair on another side is that potential energy plus EV. So for this second junction, I have expression iota h cross del psi 2 by del t equal to h cross t psi 1 plus ev psi 2. Now I have to solve my equation 1 and 2. In order to solve these two expression, I am expressing psi 1 as n1 half and separating out the phase in terms of e raised to power iota theta 1 and similarly for psi 2, I have n2 half e raised to power iota theta 2. From this expression, 
I can have the value of del psi 1 by del t by differentiating it with respect to t. So differential gives me the two terms and from this expression, equation 1, I can also find the value of del psi 1 by del t. Equating these two values and in order to solve this expression, I am multiplying both sides by a factor n one half e raised to power minus iota theta one. I get my term this half d n one by dt plus iota n one d theta one by dt minus iota t n one n two half e raised to power iota theta two minus theta one plus iota e v upon h cross n one. Here I have substituted theta 2 minus theta 1 to be equal to delta. So here is the term e raised to power iota delta. And I have expressed ex exponential term in terms of cos and sine. Since there are real and imaginary parts both in this expression, I am separating my real term and imaginary term. So first of all, separating real term, I get half dn1 by dt equal to, from here, real term is, this is iota into iota, iota square, minus one, minus minus, plus, this makes t n1 into half sine delta. This term contains iota, so it is imaginary. This term also contains iota. So I have only one real term, which gives me dn1 by dt is equal to 2t n1 n2 half sine delta. Now real part, uh, now imaginary part. Here imaginary part we can see the term containing iota is n1 d theta 1 by dt. And since there are two terms which contain iota here, I get equation four. I have solved this expression only for my first junction, that is first junction. Similarly, I can solve this for psi two. I get my expressions fifth and sixth. This is the third expression is for dn1 by dt. And fourth expression is the variation of number of superconducting electrons in the second junction with T. Now I am taking that both the superconductors are identical in nature. That means N1 is approximately equal to N2. So from my third and fifth expression, I can show that there is a difference of only negative sign in these two terms. So from this, I get dn1 by dt equal to minus dn2 by dt. That means if electrons are removing from first junction, they are adding in the another junction. This is depicted by a negative sign. Now from these two expression, fourth and sixth, we can show that d theta 2 by minus d theta 1 upon dt, which is equal to partial differential of delta with t, this is equal to minus 2 ev upon h cross. Since from there, uh, from this expression, the phase difference delta depends upon t. I am integrating it with respect to t. I get del functional dependence with t equal to del at time t equal to 0 minus 2 ev upon h cross. So the current will be j equal to j0 sine del 0 minus 2 ev upon h cross. Here we can see that the current oscillates with frequency omega which is equal to 2 ev upon h cross that means in the output 
we have a current which is oscillating that means this current is alternating current this effect is known as ac josephson effect this means that if we have two superconducting junctions which are separating by an insulating layer then in output we have a current which will be alternating in nature so from here we get h cross omega equal to 2 ev that means a photon of energy equal to 2 ev will be emitted or absorbed when an electron pair crosses from one junction to another now from this equation it is clear that if we know the frequency and by measuring the voltage we can clearly find we can find out the value of e upon h cross so this effect has been utilized for the precise determination of value of e upon h cross and a dc voltage of 1 mu v produces a frequency of 483.6 mega hertz so this is ac josephson effect so we can have both type of current in output it will depend whether we have applied a voltage source on the junction or not in the absence of any voltage source we will still have a current and that will be dc and with the application of a voltage source we will have a current and that current will be ac so these two are the josephson effects that means even if we have a insulating layer it between the two superconductors and this layer is thin so that superconducting electrons can cross from one junction to another junction through a insulating layer then josephson effect is possible thank you students for watching